Welcome to this video today where I will be showing you how to create a whirlpool. So let's get started. The way this whirlpool is going to work is we're going to have our object sucked into the middle while the object is constantly rotating with this whirlpool. And eventually when the object hits this black dot, we want to destroy the object as if it's being actually sucked into a whirlpool. I'm going to begin by creating our player, just 2D object sprite going to rename that player. I'm going to drag over our player sprite. I'm just going to change the color so that we can see it. Going to be easier with a colored sprite than just white to see. Then we're going to create our whirlpool. So another 2D sprite. I'm going to name that whirlpool going to drag our sprite over here. So that's quite small. I'm going to increase the scale to 3 per se. That looks better. We're going to drag it down. I'm going to bring this front so that we can actually see the player. All right, so right now, uh, actually, I'm going to make this whirlpool larger so that it's actually sucked in. Okay. Now, in order for us to have both this whirlpool and the player rotating, I'm going to create an empty game object and I'm going to name it rotation. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to make this the parent of the whirlpool so that now if I have rotation spin, then anything inside of rotation is also going to spin. So our whirlpool is going to spin. For now, we're just going to worry about the rotation. So we'll get back to other stuff that we're going to have to do to the player. But first, we're going to look at the script for rotating. So whirlpool rotation, or rotate is why I named it. So here, we're going to create a public float called rotate speed. You can make it private if you like. I just did that so that you can later change this value in the inspector easily. And then in the update, all we're going to do, we only need one line, and this is transform.rotate, and what we have in here. So this is saying we want our, uh, this is the direction we want our objects to rotate, and then this is going to be the rotate speed as we had before. So this is how fast our whirlpool will rotate. We're going to save this. And then we are going to attach this script to rotation. So we're attaching it to rotation and not the whirlpool itself. Because eventually what we're going to happen is we want the player to also rotate. So then if we, if the player becomes a child of rotation, both the whirlpool and the player will rotate. So we're just going to add this right here. And as you can see, we need to input that rotate speed. I'm going to put it as 25 for now. Hopefully that's a good speed and it can be adjustable right here rather than having to change it in our script. And then now we're going to look at a script for the player. Uh, you can create another one here and then I already have that popped up here. So first we're creating a private game object. And so this is really just going to be a place for us to save the collision game object as you see over here. So I already created an on trigger enter 2D. Now this is a trigger and I'll show you why we want to make this whirlpool a trigger in a second. So we have this player and we don't want to it to physically collide and let's say bounce off the circle. We just want to see if it's touching. So I'm going to add a circle collider to our whirlpool. And I'm going to make sure to click that it is a trigger. So now when the player is touching the whirlpool, then whatever is in here is going to happen. So this is now saying if the game object is tag whirlpool in this collision, then the whirlpool we're setting that whirlpool we create up here equal to collision game object. And we are changing the transform of our player to that of the whirlpool, the transform.parent of the 
player. Now the parent is going to be this rotation dude. So essentially everything that happens to the rotation is going to happen to its children. So we're making the player a children of Whirlpool's parent, which is rotation, so that the player will also rotate. And then this we will get to a little later when we're going to deal with destroying the player. So for now, we're just going to add the player script to the player, and that's good. Now, we're, I'm going to add a rigid body and a box collider on our player right now. And what do I a uh, rigid body 2d All right so we just had a rigid body 2d make sure to change this gravity scale to zero or else the cube is going to fall straight down now as you might remember before we have to tag our whirlpool whirlpool so i've already created a tag but if you haven't you can simply click add tag add say i'm um, in I already created one, so maybe Whirlpool 2. And then if you go back to Whirlpool, Whirlpool 2 is right here. So I'm just going to select Whirlpool because that's what I selected before. Before we can play and to check on our rotation, we have to change the Whirlpool to the X and Y to 0, 0. And before I change that, I'm going to show why. So right now, as you can see, our whirlpool is rotating around. It seems to be some location, right? But we don't want that. We want our whirlpool to be rotating around itself. Now, the reason it does this is because we're having it rotate around rotation. And if you look, the whirlpool's transform is from Right now, the Whirlpool is th basically three units away from the rotation. So if we make that zero, zero, that resolves the problem. And then we can move rotation however we'd like. Now that the Whirlpool's transform is zero, zero, we can play. And now the player is spinning as if it was part of the whirlpool. So that is exactly how we want it. Now we're going to work on the effect of the whirlpool sucking the player in. And we're going to do that by adding a point effector 2D onto our whirlpool. Now the point effector 2D is going to work as a magnet. And I'm just going to change the force magnitude. So that's basically the strength. And I'm going to make that negative 5. Force mode, as you can see, it's how it's going to apply the force. If it's going to apply it at the same force, if it's going to gradually increase. So to make it more realistic, I'm going to change it to inverse squared. And then make sure, if you look, this effector will not function until there's at least one enabled 2D clutter with used by effector checked on this game object. So we're just going to check this for our circle collider. Now, our player is getting sucked in. But oh wait, our player isn't destroying. It's just doing this. We don't want that, right? So we're going to create an empty game object. And inside this is going to be the area that the player needs to hit for the player to lose. So this black hole that we have, which is like the center or the vortex of our whirlpool, I'm going to add a circle collider. And just like we made that whirlpool a trigger, I'm going to make this a trigger. So that, I'm not sure if you saw earlier, here, respawn, or in this case it's really just die, if on trigger enter, right? So again, if the player touches it, we don't want it physically bumping into it. If it touches, we want to destroy the player. So we're gonna make sure to tag this, respawn. And then now, if we click play, 
players can slowly get sucked in and die. Now, if you feel like this area is too wide, you can always make that smaller. Or you could always make this uh, overall whirlpool a lot larger. That's really up to you. And now, yep, might want to make it even smaller, actually. And so make sure that your player is first touching the whirlpool. So let's say you're trying to make a game where you're avoid avoiding the whirlpool. The player is only going to get sucked in right now if it is within distance of this circle collider. So if you were to make this circle collider larger, you could, so that anything that's here will start to get pulled in. So just beware of that. So right now our player's within this area, so it's gonna work. Now you have the full whirlpool effect. As soon as the player hits there, the player is destroyed. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you can implement something, whether it's the magnet or the rotation or both, which make this whirlpool effect.